I am here to show you my take on um, this watercolor effect that's been going around. Um, I feel like at this time, um, when we're limited in the services that we can provide to our clients, um, this is a really great upsell that people might really love. I know I fell in love with them the very first time that I saw them. Um, so I'm so grateful that some tutorials have been floating around showing how to achieve this effect. And actually, I'm gonna walk you through every single step but you can create an action, so really you can just hit one button um, and it's going to layer on all the stuff that I'm gonna walk you through. Um, but it's good to walk through it so that you know how to control everything if you feel like you need to make tweaks to it and then you can make your own action. But then after that, all you have to do is the fun part and which is like brushing on the effects. So um, I've been playing around with quite a few of these. So we're just, I'm gonna, walk you through it from the very beginning. So um, first what I want to do is choose an image um, and these actually I'm just choosing from um, files I want to put on my social media. So these have actually all been sized to 2048 and um, the effect is still looking good. So if you're not needing to supply like a high-res file for a client or something, if you're just wanting to like play around like size 2048 on the long edge, um, is working just as great as a high-res image. Okay, so I'm just gonna right-click on this and say open with Adobe Photoshop so it will open my image and you can see I've played around with this one already before. Okay, so this is the image that we are going to start with. Um, and also, another thing that you will need to do before you can um, achieve the end result is buy a couple of things on Etsy. So this is what I purchased on Etsy and it actually had everything that I needed in it. It has four different watercolor papers, which is basically that, you know, makes it look like it's painted on watercolor paper. Um, so it's just an, a page that you're gonna drop in on Photoshop. And then it also comes with a bunch of brushes um, that you'll need to achieve all these like splatter effects and stuff. It's got um, a really good amount of different types of brushes so that um, this effect will look different in all the images. And as you can see, it's basically made for exactly what we're trying to do here. Um, so I was really happy with this one. Um, I've seen in other tutorials there, um, just searching for watercolor paper downloads for Photoshop <laughs> um, and doing it separately. So they're finding the paper and then separately searching for watercolor brushes. So I really feel like this is a really good variety and you get everything you need in one download. So I would advise that. I'll put the link um, in the notes below or if you're reading this blog post or wherever I will give you a link to the shop and you can purchase that there okay so after you have that you're just going to open your image in Photoshop and then the first thing we're going to do is make a new layer so hit command J to create a new layer um, that's alt J if you're on a PC and then you're going to convert this layer into a smart object all you have to do is right click convert to smart object next you're going to go to filter up here at the top and choose filter gallery and here um, you have a bunch of different effects um, I know when I first got into this mine were all closed so just choose artistic and choose dry brush. And then um, you have the option to change the brush size, the detail, and the texture. I found that I liked my brush size to be smaller for like clearer detail. I don't want it to look like super messy, but that might be an effect that you're going for, or maybe even, I feel like landscape and stuff is going to look really neat because it's just gonna look more painterly. So if you want it to look like you're using basically like a wetter brush, I feel like just increase that brush size. But I was pretty happy around like zero or one. Um, and so keep this in mind for if you're creating an action, um, what you're typically going to want. So I'm gonna leave mine on one. 
For my brush detail, I found myself liking a larger number. Um, so 10 looks good, 9, 8 all look good, um, but when you go down to 0, you can see it basically looks like you have a lot more brush strokes, and I found that not to be like a splattering on the face. Um, so just a higher number I found worked better there. And then texture, you can see the difference between 1 and 3 here. Um, 3 just kind of makes it start looking really crispy, so I was happy with 1. So I'm just going to hit OK there. And then you're going to repeat this step. You're going to come back up to Filter, Filter Gallery. And this time you're going to choose Cutout. And again, um, you have some different options to play around with over here. And it looks like uh, maxing out the number of levels is best. So you're going to want to keep that on 8 edge simplicity um, gets a little weird as you increase so zero seems to be best there and then edge fidelity you can play around with here as well um, not that anything looks better than anything on this one but two seems to be the magic number all right and then just hit okay next what you're going to do is come down right below smart filters you'll see filter gallery so this top filter gallery I want you to double click on the icon beside it for this you're going to choose pen light so just go under mode for the drop down choose pen light and bring that opacity down to 50% and hit OK all right next we're going back to filter drop it down to blur and choose smart blur. Here, we're going to set radius to five. Threshold is going to stay at 100 and I'm choosing high for the quality and then you can hit okay. Now we're gonna go back up to filter one more time. Choose stylize this time and find edges. So now we're going to come back over and um, right beside find edges on the icon over here, I want you to double click, change the mode to multiply, and set that opacity to 50% as well, and then hit OK. Okay, so that is it. So I wanted to do this image for you because as you can see, um, we've lost a lot of detail on the face, but I kind of found a workaround um, to fix that, and that's what I'm going to show you in this next part. So um, here you can zoom out if you like um, to make your canvas larger, and I'll just show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to hit my magnifying glass, hit option, and then just click on the image, and it will zoom it out. That way if I want to make my um, canvas larger, I've got like a bigger canvas basically to do that so um, to make the canvas larger just hit C and that's going to toggle your crop and then you can just extend the edges out for as large as you'd like your canvas um, I found um, if the image doesn't need to be larger it actually kind of makes brushing a little bit easier um, I like to choose one big brush just dab it on and then I can um, and then I can make sure I can't see any edges in it. So you'll see what I mean in a minute. For now, we'll keep this um, canvas larger. So I'm just gonna hit the check mark. And now what we're going to do now that we have our um, canvas size locked in is um, go down to file, place embedded, and we're just gonna choose the watercolor paper um, that we'd like to drop over. So um, it's already opening up, but if you just downloaded it, it'll be in your downloads folder, and then you can choose which paper you like. I just kind of like rotate between the four. I don't really like any one better than the other. And then I'm just gonna place it over my canvas and stretch it out to make sure it's covering all parts of it and hit the check mark. And then lastly, on this watercolor layer, um, click on that layer and then come up here and change from normal to multiply. All right, now I'm gonna drop down to my background layer and I'm going to add a mask by clicking on this icon. 
and I'm going to hit Command I. Basically, it's going to hide that background layer. Um, but what I want from that background layer is to be able to see the face. So I'm going to paint over the face with white. So I'm going to hit B to toggle my brush. And then um, you can see that it's black right here. I want to paint over it in white. And it doesn't matter. So I have one of my like watercolor brushes and that's fine for this. And I'm just going to paint over her face. You can't see it. Here I can turn the first layer off. So this is all I'm doing. I just want to paint around her face because that's what I want um, to have more clear detail on. All right. So I'm going to click that again. So now that I know that that's there. Okay. So now I'm going to click on layer one. I'm going to add a mask here and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit command I to invert that layer. Now all you can see is her face. And then I'm just choosing um, one of my, like any of these brushes that I like that's loaded already. Um, and you just have to double click on the brush set that you have downloaded and they'll load into Photoshop automatically. I didn't have to restart or anything. Um, anyway, I've been playing with all these different brushes and found that I really liked 24 a lot. Um, and then you can resize it up here. And what I am liking doing is, um, and this is why I mentioned earlier, I didn't really like um, making the canvas larger if I didn't need to. Because if I choose the brush size to be about the size of the image, all I have to do is click on it and then I get a really great effect all around the image. But now you can see um, my like blurry face is brought back. So all I have to do is hit B again, I'm still on the brush and I'm gonna um, hit the letter X and that's going to invert my colors over here. And I'm just gonna make my brush smaller with this black brush, brush it over her face, and now it's clear again. So the rest has that like painterly effect, um, but I can see her face a lot better. And I just found personally, I like the way that looked a lot more. So anyway, then it's just like all up to you, whatever you wanna do. Um, I liked this brush number 18 a lot too for just um, effects on the edges. Um, a lot of times, at least for me, my brushes are sizing up to the largest and you'll find when you come down here, you just see the crosshairs. It's because the brush is so big. So you could just make it a little bit smaller and then you'll see the outline of it. So you can see all the cool texture on the outsides of this. So as long as I make sure um, none of those are going over the size of the image, I'm not gonna see any cut off lines. And I, oops, sorry, I was still on black. I'm just gonna do Command Z and I'll bring it back. And then I'm gonna hit the letter X again and you'll see it toggled back over to white over here for me. And then I can just stamp this on. Now, what I meant by going over edges is that. So I don't wanna see that edge. So if, you, if that does happen to you, you can hit Command Z or you can just erase it, whatever works best for you. And again, I was pretty happy with my like one stamp so I'm just gonna come back over here and brush over her face again to get that back okay and so then um, if you want to create an action um, the action I created was everything from the beginning until I drop the watercolor paper in all you have to do is come up here to actions and then just come up here to create new action so just click on this name it something We'll call this watercolor to record and then it's going to start recording every single step that you do so what you're going to do is just go through all the steps that I just walked you through and then hit stop right here um, when you right before you get to that um, dropping the paper in um, and then you can just do the rest of that by hand. So real quick, I just want to show you how quick this workflow is once you have created your actions. So um, I have this image open already that we can play around with. So I'm just going to come back up here to watercolor one, which is the action I created for myself. I'm going to hit play. 
and it's going to do its thing relatively quickly, a lot faster than it just took us to do all of that work by hand. And here's our effect. And you can see again, this is um, on the faces, it's that effect that I don't um, love as much. So all I have to do now is run up to file, place embedded. I'm going to choose a paper. And you'll notice I didn't resize on this one. I wanted to show you that workflow as well. Um, so that paper just went right over the image. It's the same size, so I don't have to resize. I'm just going to hit the check mark and then I'm going to hit multiply on the paper. Okay, and then I'm going to run down to the background. I'm going to add my um, layer and invert it for so I can make the faces look nice. And then I'm going to add my layer here and invert it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, paint her face in right here. I'm going to do her and her daughter. Um, okay. And then I'm just going to choose the brush I want to use. I'm going to go back to that 24 because I like the little drippy things on it. And then um, all I have to do is make sure those drips like aren't going off the edge of the paper and then all I'm going to have to do is just stamp it on basically. Um, so that might work okay. We'll just go ahead and try it. Pretty good. And then if I wanted more down there, I might choose a different brush. Um, so what's the other one I like? 18 I think. Um, I'm going to make it a little smaller. And then you can also play with the opacity here as well. Um, if you wanted some to not be like quite as heavy, if you want to like bring her leg in and then just kind of paint it over. So um, that's looking pretty good here. And then all I'm going to do is hit the letter X. And again, just brush over her face. So that it looks more clear and that's it so you can see a few others that I've just been playing around with um, this one I did several stamps I did the drippy brush one um, but it was a lot smaller so that's how it came out and this one I um, had a bunch of edges on so I went through and erased it so played with a bunch of different opacities and a bunch of different brushes for that one um, this was another fun one. So you just, I don't know, go through the brushes and find what kind of like effects that you like and you can play around with them. Um, this is another one with an extended canvas. And you can see right here, this is what I don't like. Um, the, my little drippy guys, um, you can see where the image actually cuts off. So that's what I'm just trying to avoid. And also trying to make these go fast so I can like, you know, make them look really nice, but, um, make a bunch for people. So anyway, that's what I've been playing around with. I hope this was helpful. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I stayed up all night until the baby went to sleep so I could record it for you. And I really enjoy making these. So I hope it brings you some happiness and your clients some happiness. And I will see you soon. Bye.